in Romans 4 verses 1 to, to 5 and we might even go a little further we see we're in the scripture says what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh had found Verse 2 says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He said, No, to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even, David, even as David also described the blessedness of the man, and to whom God imputed righteousness without works. Mm -hmm. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Mm -hmm. Verse 8 said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Come at this blessedness, then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Mm. Divine justification is a principled process that brings an individual into a divine spiritual relationship with God which outlines the remedy for sin and its obligations to formulate an unbreakable union with God. The illustrated scripture passages include the call of Abraham from an unrighteous life, a life of darkness, to a righteous life, a life of light. As I go over the beginning with the topic of the sermon, justification, divine justification and sanctification, it is explained that divine justification is a principled process that brings an individual into a divine spiritual relationship with God which outlines the remedy for sin and its obligation to formulate an unbreakable union with God. The illustrated scripture passages included the call of Abraham from an unrighteous life, a life of darkness, to a righteous life, a life of light. In Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, as we turn, reading from 1 to 3, this is what it says. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And God will make of thee a great nation, and God will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. <clears throat> Verse 3 says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. 
Genesis 12, 1 to 3 gives us the initial detail. But Romans 8, 24 to 30 gives us further study. Romans 8. This is what Romans 8 says, begin from 24. Did I say 24? Romans 8, 24 to 30. This is what it says here. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. For what a man said, why don't he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience, hallelujah, wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray, for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, hallelujah, which cannot be uttered. Yeah. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. <coughs> Abraham fulfilled the conditions of the covenant and was called righteous. And we too must fulfill the conditions of the covenant that we too be called righteous as we turn to Psalms, the book of Psalms, and let's look at 25. Let's look at 25 and look and see if we can find something That can substantiate what we are here about. <clears throat> verse 25 says, verse 14, sorry, says, 25, 40 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that yeah, fear yeah. him, and he will show them his covenant. Amen. Amen. So Abraham fulfilled the conditions of the covenant and was called righteous. This is something that God does. And to say that God is Alpha and Omega gives foundational principle not only to the word but to the life so lived. This however are the hallmark of grace, mercy, reconciliation, salvation. Etc. But we go to divine sanctification. Mm -hmm. Divine sanctification is also a divine principle process that brings an individual into a holy union with God. Sanctification is der derived from the Latin word or from words in Latin and Greek 
That means holiness. Let me say this again. Divine sanctification is also a divine principle. A divine principle process that brings an individual into a holy union with God. Sanctification is derived, it is derived from words in Latin and Greek that means holiness. The Greek emphasize on the Greek stem, which really means the root word. So the focus of sanctification with holiness is strictly God's business. <clears throat> Psalms 99, as we turn, Psalms 99, reading from verse 5, tells us this. Psalms 99, 5 to 9 says, Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool. Amen. For he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name, they call upon the Lord, and he answered them. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. Verse 7. They kept his testimonies and the ordinances that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord, our God. Thou was a God that forgavest them. Thou, thou, thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Now it says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. So Psalms 99, verses 5 to 9, describes to us an act of, of, of an act which was consecrated. So in other words, we are saying, Psalms 99, verse 5 to 9, described to us a consecrated act, a focused effort to God mm -hmm. called worship that fits an unbreakable communion with God, which is obedience continually. Or can be figured to be a journey and straight and narrow, not turning. James 1, James 1, verses 17 to 24, explains to us a little about the straight and narrow. James 1. James 1, reading from 17, says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable, neither shadow of turning. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Mm -hmm. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Mm -hmm. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face, in a glass, 24 says, and he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. Yes. The exhortation to steadfast Christian living 
was proclaimed by one of God's apostles speaking of Peter in 1 Peter 1 verse 15 to 20 we can see some more illustration leading to sanctification praise the Lord 1 Peter 1 are we near? Verse 15 says, For, but as ye which had called you holy. Start over. But as ye which had called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. holy. It's not. And if he be for and if he call on the Father who without respect of person judge according to every man's work pass the time of your sojourning here in fear for as much as ye know that ye were redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold for your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers yes. but with the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb without blemish and without spot let me go back to 17 and if he call on the father who without respect of persons Judge it according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as he know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in the last times for you. First Peter 1, verse 15 to 20. gives a summation on a critical question can be seen and understood in Leviticus 11 and verse 44. Leviticus 11 and verse 44 tells us that for I am the Lord your God, and he shall therefore sanctify yourself, and he shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall he defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I can say there's a lot of creeping things. Some of them is called one of them is called unbelief. And another is called distrust. And we have one who is always there that the Lord says will never and is not moved out totally. We have doubt as a creeping thing. So I read over 44 again, it says, For I am holy. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord your God, and he shall therefore sanctify yourself, and he shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall he defile yourselves with any manner of Creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Commentators say the holiness of God is a major theme throughout the Old Testament. And particular in the book of Leviticus. God commands his people to reflect his holiness in their lives. Amen. 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 And Peter, as we have just read, make sure stated. 
But there's a sweet passage here, or a sweeter passage, and one of the sweet passages in Scripture, in Leviticus 20 and verse 7, listen to what it says here. Sanctify yourself therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Amen. to the law of God in all its spiritual leading is the offspring of justification. So justification is by faith and sanctification is obedience. Amen. The two are closely connected. The grace of God produces justification, which is righteousness and sanctification and obedience to the Lord to the law of God is sanctification mm -hmm. and so obedience to the law of God sanctifies us the climax to this old epistle is that glorification of God is awaiting mm -hmm. and we have to know that God is exalted in Revelation 14 and verse 12, Revelation 14 and verse 12, let me find it quick. And I hope. Revelation 14 and verse 12, this is what it says. I think we know it right when here is the patience of the saints, that's what I want to say. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So Romans 4 and verse 12 summarizes. They that obey and keep are welcome and are called saints. When those who would have accept and live according to the three angels' messages in righteousness and obedience, we would have actually inherit and eat the fruit of the Amen. land. And if we refrain from obeying the three angels' messages and neglect the righteousness and the obedience of God <coughs> and make it void, the wrath of God, we will receive. And the inextinguishable reward that we should have, we would lose. The scripture tells us, Many are called and few are chosen in Matthew 20 and verse 16. But then again in Matthew 7 and verse 14, where I will turn to Matthew 7 and verse 14, something is said. <clears throat> Matthew 7, verse 14. Listen to the scripture. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want to say that the scripture always frightens me, because I personally know that we have to be totally committed, and be strictly, and be in strict obedience to the word of God, to make it into the promised land. No wishy-washy foolishness will take us into glory land. Amen? So, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. We're talking about life everlasting here. And few be, be that find it. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, verse 13 says that we should enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Mm -hmm. And it says that many there be, which go in there at. Amen? So this is not no follow suit. The narrow gate is the place to travel. Amen? Amen. We must have an improper garment. We must understand that at the climax of justification and sanctification is also a judgment. Noah experienced it. Because the Bible said that Noah found grace in the size of the Lord. Moses explains it, experienced it too. 
In uh, Exodus 33 and verse 13, that we should have touched this morning. There's something here we said, and I believe we might have read it this morning also. Exodus 33 and verse 13. As we come to a close, <clears throat> this is what it says. 13 says, and there are many, there are much more to, 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 to this, really. He said, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have to speak unto God, he said, If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, <clears throat> that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. But he never finished there. And he said, and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. But listen to what 15 says. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known? Hear that. I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. The question was asked, and he said, Is it not in that thou goest with us? How can we go without the Lord? So, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are up on the face of the earth. And I want you to know the word separated here. So shall we be separated. Amen? Amen. So that we could understand that it's sermon which is justification and sanctification. Moses knew that if grace was given, he could behold the glory of God. And thereafter we did see the act of judgment. Abraham also found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Live the life of justification by faith and sanctification by obeying the law of God. And we see judgment that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah because of disobedience to the word of God. The presence of God was revealed in the gospel. And it was made known the method by which man was to be reconciled to God. Notwithstanding the justice of God and the guilt of the transgressor of his law. So where was devised? Whereby satisfaction sorry, could be made to the law by the infinite sacrifice of the Son of God. As a penitent sinner contrite before God, discerns Christ in his behalf, and accepts his atonement mm -hmm. as his only hope in this life and the future life, his sins are pardoned. Pardon and justification are one and the same thing. And glory be to God that justification is the opposite of condemnation. God's boundless mercy is exercised toward those who are holy and deserving. He forgives transgressions and sins for the sake of Jesus, who has become the propitiation for our sin. Mm -hmm. Through faith in Christ, the guilty transgressor is brought into favor with God and into the strong hope of life eternal. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for these few precious words. I pray, dear Father, that men, women, children everywhere will take heed. Because indeed, dear Father, what we are seeing and what we are experiencing, your coming is very near. Amen. We glorify your name, dear Father, and we joyfully accept your second coming. May the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. transform our hearts and transform our lives. Please, no. And may we walk faithfully on that straight and narrow. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.